Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining us here on uh, day three of the RS Racecraft's Cook'em 13 kit build here in my uh, two-car garage. Made some pretty good progress here today. I'm going to call it uh, day three of actual construction. I had a very short day and combined with about a half of a day today. So we'll call it the end of day three. We got the um, engine bears and the longitudinal um, strengtheners as well as all the cross braces. Those are in, tacked in, and with a couple temporary welds uh, in the bottom of the boat as well. I got the chine extensions in um, up on the front of the boat. I got the the uh, angle of the, uh, the bow, the dead rise set with a temporary brace in there. And I also got a pretty good start on the transom. I didn't realize that this was a three-piece transom because it's a very complex and bent piece to include the swim step. So you have to build the, the actual transom plate that goes up against the, uh, the pump and it gets welded into as well as a pump tunnel gets welded into that. And I'll show you some more details about that later on today. So thanks for joining us. At the end of the video, don't forget to subscribe. I believe that button would be right over there on the left side. Hit that subscribe button. You'll get all the updates on this build. Thanks for joining. I uh, hope you enjoy the the little tips and pointers on some things that I use here, uh, like simple little things like how to tap holes a little bit better, uh, welding on some bolts and stuff like that with the, uh, the angle of the gun. Did a little bit of a TIG and MIG welding today on the transom. I'll show you some of the details on the next video. I'm going to show you an overall view of the boat right now as it sits tonight. Thanks for uh, watching again and hit that subscribe button. So the next step in the RS Racecraft's Cook'em 13 kit build is to get the bottom sheet here ready to install those uh, engine bears and the under deck floor supports. So when you're, you have this big floppy bottom here and even though it's 3 8 on the inside and 3 16 on the outside, there's still a lot of bit of flex into it. So what I did is I took and put the, uh, the outside chine here on some saw horses to kind of stabilize everything. In order to set the right dead rise, essentially you have to put a temporary brace across the front of it. Um, and then we are going to, that's going to set the angle of the dead rise because of the flex that is indeed in this uh, bottom sheet still. So lined it up on the outside of that chine, lined it up on the outside of this chine with a little mark, and then clamp that thing really good. I may have to weld in a temporary support in there. I'll read ahead uh, um, on the instructions if, uh, if I can just get away with clamping it. Once that is in, um, you're going to um, temporarily install their hydro blaster pump, their intake housing into here. These are all quarter inch by 20 holes that are drilled into it. Super nice having all this stuff CNC laid out, drilled, tapped, and everything aligns perfectly. When I'm building one of my jet sprints from scratch, I have to align all that stuff, get the pump lined up, cut out the bottom. So it's so nice to be working with this cnc stuff so that thing is anchored in uh, just the four corners and then the reason you do that is you put a temporary piece of just scrap metal that's bolted into the uh, the back of the hydro blaster and that is going to kind of um, replicate where the transom is going to be if you will so then those engine bearers are going to run off of that so i just used a little piece of angle one thing that I've learned over the years of building jet sprints is it's just easiest with the dead rise to mark everything off the center line. So here I drew my uh, my center mark from there. And because I'm installing a Kawasaki, um, the engine bearers are supposed to be 18 and an eighth spread. So it went nine uh, and a sixteenth out to each side, made my mark. So now I know right where that engine bearer is going to come in. And uh, I did have to cut a little bit of a relief, relief from that so that it would fit all the way out to where the outside longitudinal is going to sit. This temporary brace that I used came in handy for finding where am I going to find my 18 and an eighth spread up there. So what I did down here where the um, this temporary brace goes down, I've just found out roughly where this was, found the center point where there, made my mark, and then put a speed square to essentially to find where that is going to land up there. And then again, we're not uh, measuring off the, the incline of the dead rise, everything is off of the pier horizontal. So went out nine and an eighth inches here, dropped my line down, made a mark, 
did the same thing over there and then I connected the marks out here. So what I ended up with is one big long um, mark where the engine bearers are gonna go. Um, so that will line up nicely and everything's working out great. Got the engine bearers in, got a few things to talk about on how I did that. There was, uh, like I said before, there was the cross piece against the uh, the hydro blaster to set the uh, the depth of the length of the engine bearers. So then everything else was just uh, kind of lining up on the marks and making sure the, the most critical thing is making these seams on both the, uh, the bearers and those exterior longitudinals are down as tight as you can get them on the bottom of the boat. That way you're uh, not welding up a big gap. Um, my weld pattern, I do a five inch stitch. So five inches on the outside, then alternate to the inside. So five, five and five. I'd like to hear in your comments down below on what, uh, what kind of a stitch pattern. I think one of the biggest common uh, mistakes is welding too much. Um, you're actually going to weaken the material by doing that. Um, so I've always been a big fan of stitch welding and all my jet sprints as well. Once I get this thing all tacked down on those five inch marks, I do go ahead and um, put in some permanent welds, not very many. I put one here on the, uh, on the stern, one in the middle, as you can see there. Actually, I put four total. And my reason for doing that is I've had plenty of tacks pop off. And then it creates way more work once you get everything in position. So I have put a couple permanent ones um, in there. Make sure everything's going to stay once we go to uh, put the sides on and everything else. When this, if this plate starts moving around, I don't want to pop off any of those tack welds. That's my technique. I'd like to hear in the comments below on how you prefer to do that. But that's, uh, that's what I've done. I don't like welding out too much of it uh, at all. Uh, in fact, like this here is the seam of the 3 16ths to 3 8 You can see that's all still unwelded. Um, the more you can get together the boat, uh, the transom, the sides, the top deck, everything holding your, uh, together without a permanent jig, the better off you're going to be uh, to hold that shape. So I see that also uh, people welding too early in their build out. So uh, for example, at this stage, they would go ahead and weld this thing completely out, the engine bearers, and that's a mistake. I would not recommend that because then you're going to twist the bottom without the sides, transom, everything else holding that into position. This is the aluminum nut that goes underneath the base plate for the fuel tank. Just pay attention to how the, uh, the gun is pointed down at the base material, just washing up a little bit of weld into that nut. I also put the bolt into there to act as a heat sink so that you don't wipe out the threads on that nut. So just a couple spots, that's good enough. This is a technique a friend of mine taught me on how to tap uh, holes really easily. Just using a little rattle gun. Um, all I do is force a nylock onto the end of the tap and then just use that rattle gun. The ratcheting system makes a really nice, uh, almost foolproof way of tapping holes without the threat of, of breaking one of those off. Next step before I put the transom in is I am tacking the, uh, the leading edge of the chine in. I did that really quick. Like I said before in an earlier video, you gotta put a chamfer so you have a, um, some weld gap to fill in there. Did that on all the corners. So just a set of vice grips and that's gonna hold it at the exact same angle as the uh, one that's bent into the bottom plate. So that's gonna be all nice and flush. Then I just used a, a clamp or two up here on the front section to hold it in position. Put my finger under there and held it nice and flush and just kind of slowly worked your way up the uh, up the bow as it went. Nice, nice tight fit. Everything worked out great. And all the way up to the very tip, I ended up cutting off those uh, temporary clamp uh, pieces that were on the bow. So now I'll go on to the other side. Well, the transom isn't exactly a simple one-piece deal there because of the... All the press brake work that's into it for the swim step, you kind of have to piece together the actual transom plate and the tunnel box for the uh, the hydro blaster. So that's what we got going on here. I got the, the face plate in there. Um, I just lined it up exactly with the bottom of the, the boat. That's where that's going to be going. So I'm going to get that. Uh, it's clamped and tacked into position. And then the next thing is going to be to fill this void back here with the tunnel. I'll show that here in just a second. And here it all is tacked together. I got to say the uh, the parts and the pieces are cut out so nice that every single one of these joints is it's just a no-brainer. The thing goes together really, really 
really good. Again, I put a little chamfer in there, clamped it all nice and flush. They said that they TIG weld these together. I'm contemplating on uh, doing that or maybe doing a mix like that little uh, weld right along there I could do with a wire feed, but uh, I'll think about it and get this thing welded up and the next thing will be to install it. So this is how it is sitting at the end of day three. I got the transom all done. I got the, uh, the, the transom plate in as well as the tunnel. And that thing just gets, uh, because of the way that we put these engine bears right up against that uh, temporary piece, that whole transom plate goes right smack up against that uh, hydro blaster and that sets the transom. This thing is just sitting in here right now. It's bolted to the hydro blaster. It's, uh, it hasn't been tack welded or anything like that. I got a little bit of fit uh, to do to make it uh, just right and make those, uh, those joints nice and tight. I will, uh, this is just kind of a sneak peek of the transom. I'll do uh, more tomorrow. Uh, the transom should be in and the sides are gonna go on tomorrow. So, but that's gonna be on the next video. Thanks for joining me again. Please hit that subscribe button. Let you know, let me know what you think about the build. Anything you'd be doing differently, let me know in those comments. I like to read those and uh, get feedback as well. Thank you.